in this video I'm going to show you how to grow a ton of garlic the easy way. So there are three things you must know before you grow garlic. Garlic is actually an overall term for three categories. Hard neck garlic, soft neck garlic and also elephant garlic. Garlic is a very hardy crop that needs little attention after planting. And the third thing is something I learned this year, which is a fantastic way to enjoy the green part of the garlic. And I'll explain that a little later on. The ideal time to plant your garlic cloves, which I'm currently separating here, is between mid-October to mid-December. Any earlier and you risk potentially losing your plants over a really cold winter because there's too much developed growth and any later and you also risk your bulbs underdeveloping. And my personal goal is to get my garlic in before December. Now there's a huge choice between different varieties of garlic that you want to grow, but the first thing you have to understand is the differences between the three categories of garlic that I mentioned earlier. So firstly, elephant garlic, which is a fantastic name, is treated more as a perennial crop. And these are massive cloves. And because they're a little bit more niche, those aren't going to be included in this video. Hard neck garlic tends to have larger cloves, and are said to be tastier than soft neck. However, the bulbs don't last as long as soft neck and soft neck, even though their cloves are smaller, they tend to have more in a bulb. Now, in terms of hardiness, if you live in a cold climate, hard neck varieties are better suited to cooler climates. Whereas soft neck is better suited if you live in a warmer climate. For me, in kind of zone eight, I will actually very happily grow both hard neck and soft neck. Unlike soft neck varieties, hard neck garlic also create garlic scapes. These are the beautiful, delicious flowering stems that you want to cut off before they flower. They appear in early summer. Just cut them off, eat them, enjoy them. You want to make sure that the plant is focusing as much energy as possible down into the bulb development. Earlier this season, this bed was growing sweet peas and spaghetti squash. So I've given it a light rake and I covered it with a two to three centimeter, so roughly an inch layer of compost and I've raked it over nice and ready. And the great news about garlic is that it is very productive. So you can plant these really close together, roughly seven to 10 centimeters between each clove, which is three to four inches. The actual planting of garlic is easy. I just use quite a large stick like this and I stick it down around five to six centimeters, so a couple of inches deep. And then using the bottom kind of wider base side, that's going down, this pointy bit is pointing up. I'm just gonna stick it in the hole, push it down firmly and move on to the next one. Now, through the magic of maths, you can actually increase the amount of garlic that you grow using one really simple planting trick. Instead of doing it in perfectly straight uh, rows and lines and blocks, what you want to do is plant using a pattern called a diagonal offset. You can see on the diagram that's on the screen, you can actually fit in a lot more plants in the same area. And what that means for small spaces in particular is that you're making full use of every square inch of ground that is available to also make sure that you have plenty of space to grow the other crops as well. And that's it, the bed behind me is planted and garlic is one of those magical crops that you simply forget about for the most part of eight months and then suddenly you've got a harvest. Now, of course, there might be a little bit of weeding to do, but that is easily tackled with a hand hoe or an oscillating hoe. If you are a bit unlucky, you might come across something called white rot, which can affect the allium family. Now, if you do get this, the simple way to prevent it affecting future years is to not grow garlic in that same place for another kind of three to four years at least, and actually spread out your garlic planting. So instead of planting all of your garlic in one block, spread it out to two, or three different planting locations around the garden just to help increase the chances of a great crop. Another thing that you may come up against when growing garlic that also affects the allium family, for example, these leeks, is a disease called rust. This is a far less of an issue though. All you need to do is remove the worst affected leaves and when it comes to harvesting the garlic, just strip off the outer layer and they'll be fine. Usually, Rust actually clears itself up as long as you look after the soil. And you can also do things such as apply lactic acid bacteria. So these leaks, I'm not worried at all. They'll bounce back just fine. 
And really the only other thing that you need to do when garlic is growing is during spring and early summer, if there's a period of 10 days without any water or any rain, give them a really heavy soaking. Garlic is usually harvested whenever the bottom 50% of leaves have turned brown, which is usually late June through to early or mid July, depending on the season. But there is actually a way to enjoy your garlic a lot earlier from late April into May. Earlier this year, I discovered the wonders of green garlic. Put simply, green garlic is garlic that is harvested prematurely and you can use not just the bulb, but also the stem and it is such a pleasant garlic flavor. It means that you can enjoy garlic way before your main garlic harvest. And I'll put some links in the video description for you to find out some recipes and a little bit more about that. Also, when you do harvest garlic, you don't have to dry it. You can use it fresh, it's called wet garlic, and the cloves are so easy to peel and it just tastes delicious. A top tip to squeezing an extra crop in the growing season is to succession plant your garlic with dwarf French beans. The day that the garlic was harvested, this is the main garlic patch, I then put in these dwarf beans, which are started around three to four weeks beforehand sown in modules. And it's just a great way to get extra food from the same growing space. Now, of course, you do want to store some of your garlic for the long term. So the method that I use is I dry out the garlic plants with leaves and everything attached in the sun for a full day. And then I'll move them to a warm, dry and airy space, for example, a shed or a garage, and I'll hang them in bunches or lay them on a single layer across a table, and I'll leave them for about four to six weeks to properly dry. Once your garlic is cured, you want to cut off the leaves, but leave a three to five centimeter, so a one to two inch bit above the bulb, and then store this in a cool, dark, but airy place. For soft neck garlic, if stored properly, they can store for around nine to 12 months. And for hard neck garlic, it's around four to six months. And of course, fermentation is another technique to preserve your garlic. One of the things that we did in the kitchen garden fermentation course is show you how to do honey garlic. Super easy, and it stores the cloves for around a year. When you do things such as embracing green garlic early in the season or make honey garlic, what you're doing is you're actually taking yourself a step closer to being self-sufficient with that particular crop. Garlic is a wonderful crop if you're pursuing self-sufficiency, but one of the biggest challenges when doing so is understanding how much of a particular crop you need to grow. So I've actually created a really simple formula that I feature garlic as the example in this video, the simple way to becoming self-sufficient in food, so you can work out exactly how much garlic you should be planting this autumn. 